Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a functional equation, a different type. We have f of x squared plus f of x equals 25x squared plus 10x all over 4. And we're going to try to find an expression for f of x in terms of x. What kind of function are we dealing with here? Uh, is this continuous? Yes, it is. It's a good function that satisfies pretty much uh, a lot of good things. But anyways, I'll be presenting, thinking about it at this point, uh, two methods maybe. And let's start with one of them. Which one? Let's start with the first method. We haven't started with, with the second method for a while, but anyways. So first of all, when I'm trying to solve an equation like this, I'm thinking about what type of function are we dealing with. Is this a polynomial? Is this an exponential function? I'm talking about f of x here. Is this exponential? Is this radical? Is this rational? All these functions, I'm going to give you an example for each one. Uh, or are th is this function a logarithmic function? Probably not, right? It doesn't look logarithmic, but so on and so forth. There's so many different kinds of functions that I haven't listed. There's trigonometric ones. But the idea is, can I guess at least, right? Because guessing would be helpful. So polynomial is something like x plus 3. Simple, or x squared, right? Can it be one of those? Or exponential is going to be like 2 to the x or e to the power x plus 1. Obviously, there are millions of examples, maybe infinitely many. Radical is going to be something like square root of 2x minus 1. Rational is going to be like x plus 1 over x minus 3. Remember the asymptotes, uh, the end behavior, so on and so forth. And log is just going to be ln x. Make sense? It, can it be one of these? And when I look at the outcome, the result, this guy over here, or the result, I think f of x is going to be a polynomial. Why? Because the result is a polynomial. I'm squaring f of x. I'm adding it to f of x itself. The result is a polynomial. So f of x is probably a polynomial. But guess what? This would be a really good question. Can we find a non-polynomial function that satisfies this? Anyways, this was a long intro. I just wanted you to think about some things. Hopefully, this was a good brain teaser. And let's get to work. So first method, I'm going to write the problem one more time because you probably forgot I did. f of x squared plus f of x equals, what was that? 25x squared plus 10x all over 4. Right? Awesome. Now, I think this is a polynomial, so I'm going to go ahead and replace f of x with a polynomial. But what kind of polynomial am I dealing with? Is f of x going to be a sub n x to the n plus a sub n minus 1 x to the n minus 1, so on and so forth? This is going to have a lot of terms. Imagine squaring something generic like this. Its square is going to be crazy. But you can find the answer. No big deal. It can be found. But when you plug it in, notice that you're, you only need x squared and x. So let's be smarter than this and think about f of x in kind of less broad terms. f of x is supposed to be quadratic? No. Because if you square a quadratic, you get a quartic plus linear quartic, quadratic, it's not going to work. So since we have f of x squared and x squared together, this kind of means f must be linear. So I'm going to replace f of x with a linear function. How do you write a linear function? ax plus b would probably work, or mx plus b will also work. Okay? m is used for slope. That's why a lot of times people are going to write this as mx plus b, but I don't care. I'm going to write it as ax plus b. ax plus b. So what happens to f of x squared in this case. You have to square ax plus b, and let's see what that gives us. That gives us a squared x squared, which kind of explains the x squared here. That's the only place that we're going to have it, plus 2abx plus b squared. This is f of x squared, and then let's go ahead and align this with f of x. I mean by align I really mean a line, the same degree power terms. And then we're going to add these up. The left-hand side gives me what's on the right-hand side here, which is kind of interesting. 25x squared, the sum, plus 10x, right? Was it 10x? How do I easily forget that? Equals. This sum is going to be, obviously, there is no x squared term. That's why aligning is important, right? Plus... 2abx plus ax. So that's going to be 2ab plus ax. 
and finally b squared plus b. Okay, great. Now at this point, I think multiplying both sides by 4 would be helpful because you don't want to deal with fractions. Come on, who wants to deal with fractions, right? Fractions are difficult. So now we get 4a squared x squared plus, I'm going to distribute the 4 here like this and like that, you know, here and here. That's going to give me 8ab plus 4a multiplied by x and finally plus 4b squared plus 4b. And doesn't that look like a perfect square to you? But anyways, that's a different story. Let's go ahead and move this stuff a little bit to the left so I can kind of um, manipulate better. And now we're going to compare. So what do you get from here? You actually get three equations. The coefficient of x squared is 25, the coefficient of x is 10, and the constant term is 0. Awesome. You know why it's awesome? Because we can factor the 4b. Wait a minute. I should have chosen 2b or not 2b. But anyways, you get the idea. This is equal to 0. So from here, I get two possibilities. Either b is 0 or b is negative 1. That's good. And then I'm going to be looking at the second equation. And that's 8ab plus 4a equals 10. If you want, divide both sides by 2. That's kind of like I have an OCD, so I got to do it. And now replace b with 0. If b is 0, we're going to get 2a equals 5, so a is going to be 5 halves. If b is negative 1, then I'm going to get negative 4a plus 2a equals 5, which is 2a equals negative 5, and a is going to be negative 5 halves. So they're kind of like opposites of each other, and these two make a good pair. We're going to plug it in. But wait a minute, you did not use the first expression. Uh-oh, that doesn't count, right? So... The first expression actually confirms what we found because if 4a squared is equal to 25, a squared is 25 over 4. Well, one of the things that's um, about this is it doesn't tell us when a is going to be negative uh, 5 halves or positive 5 halves. So using the second equation is a good idea because it kind of associates a and b values. Does that make sense? Okay, great. So let's go ahead and see what happens in each case. Well, our expression f of x was a x plus b, so the first equation gives us 5 halves of x plus 0, which is 5, half, 5 halves of x, or 5 over 2x. And the second one gives us a x, which is negative 5 over 2x minus 1. So both of these equations should satisfy the original problem, and you can go ahead and check out. But before that, or after that, I don't know, we're going to use the second method. And the second method is not always applicable, at least not easily, right? And, but this time it works because I designed this problem. I think I made it up. I can't remember, but let's call it homemade. How about that? Uh, I believe so. Um, it works for this case. So you could go ahead and keep it that way. So there's two options here. I can just uh, keep it as is and then make the left-hand side a perfect square. But I like multiplying by four because didn't we just talk about it? Like whenever you see something like x squared plus x or any variable squared plus x, always multiply by 4 because that gives you a perfect square. So let's go ahead and use that idea. And now this things will be really good because left-hand side just needs a 1 to become a perfect square. And that's just perfect. I love perfect squares because they are perfect. Nobody is perfect. Anyways, that's a different story. But now look at this. Not only the left-hand side becomes a perfect square, the right-hand side also becomes 1. Isn't that awesome? And now we get 2 f of x plus 1 equals 5x plus 1 squared. And from here, by square rooting both sides, we get two solutions. 2 f of x plus 1 equals 5x plus 1. And the 1 cancels out, and f of x becomes 5x over 2, which is the same thing as 5 halves of x. That's one of the solutions. And the other solution becomes 2f of x plus 1. I can keep this side positive and negate the right-hand side. It doesn't matter. You can do either way. And then from here, 2f of x will be negative 5x minus 2. And upon division by 2, upon division by 2, that's such a big word, you get the other solution. And that actually ag agrees with what we found before. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.